if the asset was fair value through OCI, if the asset was fair value through OCI, the gain would also be recognized in OCI. And you would still have the same deferred taxation liability. So nothing would be different, but the taxation charge would also be in OCI. Yeah? Because you would be engaged in matching. Right. Next. I have done one example. I have been a bit painfully slow on that first example because I want everyone to be happy. And now you've got that first example, I hope you are happy. I can now begin to tease you and see if you can apply the logic in another example. So let's, having done the first example, let's have a look at our second application. Let me make up another small scenario and let's have an um, Yes. So the taxation charge is also an MCI match. So initial recognition, let us have some land, which is PPE, and the cost of the land is, uh, I don't know, 200. And let us have a recoverable amount of the land, and the recoverable amount of the land is, I don't know, 160. And let us have a tax rate, and let us have a tax rate of 40, you would charge the impairment loss of 40 to P&L. So you can write that out, that could be worth one or two marks as you explain the impairment process, how you're writing the asset down, charging it to profit, blah, 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 blah. The carrying value of the asset is 160. Secondly, what you would then do is look at the tax base. Now the impairment loss is not money. The impairment loss is non-cash. The impairment loss is paper. So the impairment loss will be disallowed for taxation purposes. No current tax relief is given on the impairment loss. Therefore, for taxation purposes, the tax base remains 200. Therefore, your carrying values come down, your tax bases remain the same, you're dealing with a loss. So you're dealing with a loss. So it's not a tax, it's a deductible temporary difference. If you've got a loss, it's dealing with a deductible temporary difference. And that deductible temporary difference creates a deferred tax asset, and the deferred tax asset is four. Yeah? Yes. So, let's go through the process ASAP, number one. Yeah, we would talk about an impairment loss. The impairment loss is 40. The impairment loss is charged to PL. 
and therefore our carrying value is now 160. If we have uh, an indicator of impairment, if we're doing an effect, we must write the asset down to the recoverable amount. The recoverable amount is the higher of the fair value, less cost to sell, and the value in use. Step number two, we can think about the tax base. So the impairment loss is ignored for taxation purposes, is ignored for tax. There is no uh, current tax relief. There is no current tax relief. So therefore, the tax base remains 200. Therefore, the tax base remains 200. So therefore, this is throwing up for us this is throwing up for us the um, impairment loss has given us a deductible temporary difference. The impairment loss has given us a deductible temporary difference. That deductible temporary difference has resulted in a deferred tax asset. So the impairment loss has created a deductible temporary difference which creates a deferred tax asset and 20% of 8, 20% of 40 is indeed 8. So you have a, the answer is 8. But the process of arriving at the answer is crucial to me. Right, back I go, forward I go. Uh, let's find some notes on deferred tax. And there will be a, uh, an example of deferred tax. So it's a little bit further on. And the exercise that I particularly want us to have a look at is called Butcher. Butcher. Butcher is about eight deferred tax examples. So after your notes on financial instruments, you come across Butcher, and Butcher is on page 172. Now, what you've seen is that for each deferred taxation example, it's a sort of three, four mark problem. But I would like to be quite aggressive in reviewing the answer to these questions. So I would like us to be able to identify the carrying value, to identify the tax base, and therefore identify the temporary difference. So I'm going to take a, a, a numerical attitude to uh, these examples. Um, and I am going to, yeah, um, invite you yeah, to do the same. So this is where I'm going quiet for five minutes, eight minutes. There are eight examples. I believe you will get eight out of eight in terms of the carrying value. For God's sake, please don't let me down. Look at the numbers in the question. There's not a lot, there's not many numbers. What's the figure in the accounts? Could you write a sentence that justifies the carrying value? Secondly, then look and think. What is the tax base? What is the amount acknowledged? What is the amount attributed to that asset or liability for taxation purposes? And then what is the temporary difference? Yeah, the difference between the two. So in the exam, probably won't be the mad number crunching process, but you are looking here at eight different scenarios. Five minutes, yeah, we're on page one, seven, two. If we need, when we're reviewing the answer, to explore in depth any of these problems, then I'm more than happy to do so. But if we're happy to go quite quickly, I'm more than happy to do so as well.